Hello. I'm Lizzie. Um, each week I'm bringing along a different origami fold that I think is rather exciting. And I'm thinking at the moment it's January that we need some really beautiful, exciting, energising but peaceful pieces of origami that we can all have a go at at home. So I'm sharing some maybe slightly edgier pieces. So this is a dahlia um, or it could be a Santa Paula, St Paulia, a type of flower. So this is actually from just each of these, just a single piece of paper. So there's quite a few steps but I thought it was so beautiful and you can also, because it's flat, it looks rather lovely, you can stick it onto the back of a card. So maybe there's a friend, family, you could also make make one of these and make a really beautiful card. There's just something I think so peaceful and beautiful about looking at these. So I'm going to show you just from white paper and we're going to end up actually making quite a big one from an A4 piece of paper. So I hope you're going to enjoy this and you'll have to be a little bit patient but it's certainly uh, quicker than the modular pieces but it is about taking your time. So grab your piece of paper. All of these films, as, I, as I've said before, are dedicated to my colleagues who work in a hospital, UCH in London, and very much thinking of staff at this time, encouraging their self-care. The, however, however busy, however difficult, it's really important that we all give ourselves time to look after ourselves, to look after others. You also need to be looking after yourselves. So, but these films are, are very much to support everybody and in staying home and distancing. We're also looking after each other. We're looking after those in hospital too, trying to bring down the rates. So if you grab a board, and hopefully in doing this, we'll forget about all of that. Let's let's think about other things. So a piece of paper. And this is the technique that I use to really take me out of thinking and just into, into just getting absorbed into something beautiful. So first of all, we're going to make a square and we might as well make a square from this entire A4. So if you take a corner and if you press it down. So yeah, so this flower seems to have come from Mitsunobu, Sonobi, um, who'd be a Japanese origamist. And um, we've great thanks for sharing this beautiful fold. Um, rather special it looks quite complicated from just one piece of paper we're going to remove this rectangle but I've ended up really loving this as I said I wanted to make a card for a friend and wanted to make something that would be flat enough to make a card but also look beautiful and I thought this really fitted it so something I can just sit there looking at because it's this lovely spirally shape on a good strong fold so then you can rip off that side like so there we go oh, we don't need that or maybe you could make some smaller things afterwards right well we've done one diagonal line i want you now to do the other diagonal line Uh, this is how it all starts, sorry Gabby, just folding a piece of paper in half. I, I love how it just takes you through this journey. So that's all we've done. We've done a diagonal there. I'm sure that's right, that looks better. So, right, the next bit is a little bit tricky and you're going to have to give yourself time and patience and okay. care. Be patient with yourself. So here it is. We're going to turn it now to the side which looks a bit like a tent. Now what we want to do is divide this into three. Now this is all about judgment and I know it's not particularly easy but you will be able to get there. So how to do that? Right, put the camera down. So having it the side that looks like a tent um, I am getting better at this just through judgment, but folding it over, maybe just roughly, because you may well have to reposition. So uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this distance to look about the same as that. I mean, goodness, you could use a ruler, but I love that, that you don't have to with origami. So that looks about right. 
that looks about the same as that um, I find the best way to then check because we need to do the three lines turned it over and then bringing it back here and lining it up right I don't know whether this will be correct or not ah, it's pretty good actually sorry I've made it look way too easy because I know it took me quite a while to get there so seeing whether it lines up and it has lined up in this case that's probably not great because I'm not able to show you what happens when it doesn't line up but you'd have to just reposition until you finally end up with them all being the same yeah so you will find that takes your time that's okay that's how it will be but you will get there eventually so that it all matches up so that everything there is the same distance as each other now we're going to do a third in the other direction which is actually much easier because once you've done it you've done it once that was a hard bit next we're going to fold and you can see it's easy now to get up to the thirds because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this edge and then match it up to those middle lines there. Oh, molting that right. Can you see? So I'm taking the top and I'm going to match it up there. And each time you're also trying to make sure it's completely flat against the paper. That way, you know, you've got it lined up right I'm going to do the same with the other one yeah phew we've got there and I love how this often origami involves a little bit of a uh, little bit of tension trying to get things right but it's better that you release it in this way than in other ways and then you feel a bit lighter for probably releasing that tension probably as well through the folding adding a certain amount of tension so as you've got it we're next going to do a horizontal line so just fold it in half it seems like nice and easy after what we've just done there we go i think it's worth that effort. and as i said this month i'm trying to bring along some more difficult ones because actually i found that people have, have obviously watched those a lot more they found them more interesting than the simpler ones which is almost a bit surprising. That's great. I'm not going to go super, super difficult, but don't worry. But um, it's rather, rather good. Right, so I hope that's looking like that for you. I hope that's working. There we go. As it is, that looks like a nice little... And I love how we've just divided this all up using our own precision and eyes and hands. There's no measuring. I'm going to turn it now to the back and let's see what we're going to do next <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take a corner that corner and we're going to aim for this point up here so taking it up so it all lines up and then give it a good strong fold there they're all good strong folds do you see so i took this corner up and i aimed for that point there which is underneath that big square and we're going to do that on each side so turn it around next thing next side so this corner and i'm going to aim up to there again as i'm doing i recommend doing it on the solid surface this is going to be a lovely big flower I'm looking forward to this the ones i've made are actually quite small pieces of paper they just look brilliant same thing again taking the corner aiming to that square and if you do this, you'll feel so chuffed with yourself. There is nothing like a sense of achievement with origami because it's a bit difficult. There we go. Next one, I haven't done that one. So taking that corner, bring it up to there. It's almost keeping your eye on that bigger picture. Oh, she says, I forget what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, is that enough? Or with, or with paper, you can reposition till you're happy. Right, so I hope it's looking like that for you. Next, next step is to take the big corners and fold inwards. So I'm going to take that point and folding up to that. Okay. 
we're doing well we've not got too many more steps well we have a bit but it's all right we are getting there and we're doing that on each side so each of these big corners bringing down like so what a beautiful thing that is okay taking this corner to the left and you'll see I've been adding a, a fold every week so there's a lovely big collection of things that you could make let's grab some coffee <laughs> there we go okay so I hope it's looking like that for you okay so next we're going to turn to the other side one side to another I'm going to show you the next step it's all flat at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side bring up here and we're just going to do a little tiny fold in there that's it not across the whole length so I'm going to take this and I'm folding it over and just that little middle square that you're doing you're not going beyond that that kind of precision I love so I took this side matched it up there and then I folded just in that little middle square okay and then do the same on that side and there's that nice repetition of pattern that little middle square same thing hmm. oh, pleasing shape so this side matching it up there Up. I've got you can see I've got one more side to do here so taking this side down to there just that little middle square so making a little mini square in the middle there right so we've done all, all our sort of folding on the flat as it were it's about to go three-dimensional here goes right how to explain this so first of all we're going to make something that looks a bit like a table can you see i am letting this middle square stand up almost like a table and these sides you could sort of tuck in again it's only in your own hands that you'll find this beginning to make sense uh, so bringing that in and i know this is all three-dimensional and i'm trying to show you on a camera which obviously this is all flat it's not on the screen but hopefully you'll get the idea do you see there we go flattening this down right we're gonna go further so uh, I found the easiest way of doing this <coughs> is to start we're gonna start to shape it more so those corners have gone in next these i'm going to push upwards do you see those middle points mm. and in doing so so it's sort of alternating these corners go in the next line will come out and these will go in but i found the easiest way is to concentrate on these outside bits at the same time I'm going to try to push it in there so I found keeping it as a table and bringing these middle bits upwards and pushing in a little bit can you see to play around in your hands and you can pause you can go back till it eventually starts to do you see it's forming this amazing structure and I'm beginning to push it all in wow we we have to might find your tongue sticking out at this point <laughs> mm. right it's kind of coming together a bit hard to put this to words and I'm sort of pushing it flat by pushing these around in oh goodness me how do I explain this 
I don't know. It just sort of eventually does its own thing. So you sort of almost need to tuck, tuck sides down. Mm. How do I explain it? Right, I'm basically trying to flatten it down into a square and you'll find at some point a square will work. Yeah. Can you see? It's formed a square. If you look on the back, it looks like that. So what you're doing is hopefully playing around with these flaps until you get to the point where they will flatten down and they can alternate. I actually, I've ended up doing it so it's going round a little bit. Can you see, I know I'm bringing along a challenge this month, but uh, I think that's a good thing. Okay, <laughs> I hope it's worked. Sorry, it was really hard to explain that one. I do, hope, I do hope you've managed, but play around and you will start to be able to squash it down. But you're not adding any extra squashes. So our next step, here goes. The flower is forming. So any one of these flaps, what we're going to do is lift it up and then fold it to that line. So I'm lifting up a flap and folding it to that middle line. You'll find it's alternating thicker layers and thinner layers. Can you see? And then you have next got a another flap. Now this is a thinner one, but you've got exactly the same idea. Each of these flaps you're picking up and you're folding down to the next line. I hope you can see this well enough. So, I am bring this down properly myself to see what I'm doing. <laughs> God, it suddenly seems so much harder when I'm trying to explain this on a camera. I was happily making these flowers away. And so this one that's thicker actually at the back you'll find it's sort of doing strange things flatten it down so that there's a little pouch there and it will help flatten it down can you see the shape of the flower is beginning to happen so this thicker one again I'm going to take to that line I know this is a more challenging one but you know what it's good for you <laughs> take on challenge and again, you'll find at the back, there's a little, little shape there. Just squash it down for now. We're actually going to reshape it a bit later on. Again, the same thing. This, another ridge there. We're going to match it up there. And each time you're adding a little, a little lovely petal. It's quite an astonishing design, isn't it? You'll be quite astonished with yourself to, to do it, hopefully. And again, because it's thicker, I'm having to reposition at the back there. Again, each of these ridges bringing to the line like so. That one's an easy one. As soon as it's thicker, then you've got another thing at the back that you have to... That's it. And... Pressing that down, and I think I've just got one more, this line, to there. So no wonder this looks beautiful, because it does require quite a bit of effort, doesn't it? <laughs> there we go. And if we turn to the back, sort of looking like this. And we're going to reposition this so it's lined up along here. So, try to... Line that up, squash it down. So again, lining it up here, repositioning this. It's so detailed, isn't it? So much can go into this. I bet you're not thinking about other things when you're trying to do this. <laughs> okay, this so are going to reposition up here. And so you get this lovely spirally pattern. An astonishing piece of design. You'd never think there's so much you could do from just folding a piece of paper. Uh, that's it. So 
it's looking like that. This is rather nice because it means then you can glue it onto a piece of card if you want it as well. So it's looking like that. We're almost there. There's just one more thing to do. So how am I going to explain this one? Right. So each of these, these little corners, can be lifted up and pushed in. Can you see? So it's sticking up and I'm pushing it in and then squeezing it so it just it just makes it look that bit nicer actually so in the corner picking up and tucking it in and you're just doing that by feel really and it will mean as well that they're all that little bit raised which makes it really rather beautiful that's it each of these I think that's working for you again. Each of these is quite thick paper at this point, and it's so that it touches into that that line. It's just by feel. You can't sort of see it really. You're just tucking it away, and hopefully. You have made yourself a quite stunning, beautiful flower. It's like a lovely wheel. Uh, I find this one very calming. Maybe not calming to make, but at the end of it, hopefully you'll feel much calmer. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you. Bye-bye.